let you guys know the agenda really quick. Jorgen is our only presenter today. Uh, so if you saw the agenda on Meetup, this is not news for you, but Jorgen will have a first session. It'll go for an hour and then we will have a 15 minute break so we can grab a snack or whatever and then come back at 12, 15 p.m. Central time. So you'll have to do a little bit of thinking about what time I mean, depending on where you are in the world. But basically an hour and 15 minutes from now, we'll start again. We will go for another hour for another session and then we will have a broad question and answer in the end. You are able to ask questions through the platform, but a limitation of GoToWebinar is that I'm the only one that can see it. So I will have to um, pause Jorgen here and there as questions build up and then anything that we miss, we can get at the end as well. You're welcome to tweet questions also. Uh, I think that's a good way to get a hold of both of us. And without further ado, I will hand it over to Jorgen. Awesome, thank you. And thank you for having me. This is great fun as always. Um, so we decided to start with five major changes in Configuration Manager that will rock your world. One of the longest titles I ever found out, actually. Um, um, but I really do think there are some really, really big game changers in Configuration Manager now. Uh, so we'll see if you agree with me or if you agree, think something else is a bigger game changer. Um, so let's see if we can get that started then. Um, my name is Jorgen Nilsson and I do some blogging and tweeting and um, yeah, you can find me basically on every social platform you like. Uh, and I'm from Sweden as well. Um, and what we're going to talk about now is five major changes, as I said. I think the administration web service is a huge game changer. Uh, desktop analytics as well. There are some caveats with desktop analytics. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, configuration manager in real time. That's also a big, big difference. If someone told me that we would be able to do what we can do today, five years ago, I would say that you were kidding or pulling my leg or something. Um, and we can do direct deployments of apps. That's also amazing. Um, also a bit in the real time space, but still anyway. And then I'm gonna go for face deployments as well. I think that's one, when, when, when me and Panu did this session in Zurich a month ago or something, or something similar, it was face deployments uh, has been out for a while, but basically no one in the audience is using it. And I think that's one of the biggest challenge there is with the speed of everything today, that even if Configuration Manager is an on-premise product, we still get three releases a year, but it's still, we shouldn't underestimate the time it takes to actually adopt the changes as well, because it's one thing to upgrade and it's a totally different ball game to get everyone to working in a different way. Uh, so that's something that we should make sure that management knows that we need a time to actually start using the new features we get. Basically it's the same issue as we have with the cloud services. Uh, we get new features, but if you don't have time to adopt and use them, you're you're missing out. So, uh, and that's what you pay for essentially. Um, so that's what I think is very very important. But let's start with the administration web service. This has been around for a long time. Uh, it had different names before, and it was a pre-release feature, and then it was just removed from the feature list where you can add and remove features or enable and disable features. Um, and now it's finally released and now it's gone because now it's part of the product. We can't enable or disable it. Basically, it's a modern API. Uh, hopefully it will replace WMI sometime in the future, perhaps. I don't know, hopefully. Um, we are seeing some parts of the console uh, working against that um, now, yeah, or you can enable it. I will show that soon. Uh, we can have access over HTTPS, so it's more secure. Uh, we get great performance. Uh, today it's used, for example, for CMG support, um, which is used by application approvals. So we can have, we can actually access some parts at least from the web service from from the CMG if we like. Uh, Sandy has a great blog post on that. I think I referred to this as well. Uh, so what happened was that we got it in 16.12 technical preview. And then it was introduced in 1810 as a pre-release. So it's been around for nearly three years. Um, 
nearly three years at least. Uh, so it's not it's not that it's brand new. It's been around for a while, uh, and it was available as a pre-release feature. Now it's not pre-release anymore, and we can't enable or disable it either. Um, and in 1906, we can actually configure the admin console to use the admin service uh, for the following things, uh, security roles, scopes, and console connections. And we enable it here on site settings or hierarchy settings. And I actually, when I did this, I actually um, couldn't connect anymore to my lab environment the first time. So I blamed this setting for it, but it was actually my SQL server ran out of disk space. So I started, I started troubleshooting in the totally wrong place. Um, so um, that's how it is in a lab environment. Uh, now I have it enabled and it was just fine. Uh, so let's let's hope that this will more and more features will move over to this more modern way of accessing the database. Um, and we can have, as I said, we can have internet access as well. So we can say uh, for the SMS provider, we can say allow configuration manager cloud gateway traffic to access the administration service. Uh, Sandy has a great blog post on it from this summer on how you can do it. Uh, and you can actually access it yourself if you like. Uh, and it's used today by the email approval request. So if we enable email approval requests, so we will, so we can be able to act, approve an application from an email, then we need this set up as well because that's the secure way of uh, authenticating in that scenario. Um, but it's, 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 I think the administration service is really cool. We have two two different providers we can access. Either we can access the version controller or the WMI controller. Uh, so we can access, there's a bit difference between them, what they actually um, um, show and what we can access. Uh, this is more of a control uh, where we can have access to, but this is more the, we can reach all the legacy stuff as well in I mean, WMI as well, almost. Um, so if we access it to Power BI, we can just say access, uh, O data feed, and then it will actually just spin up and do it for us. Uh, let's see if we have that up and running on my machine. I actually start, didn't try to start Power BI, so I guess it will auto update or something else fun now when I try to do it. Uh, we'll see what it says. Um, because as soon as we can do that, then it will be much easier to create uh, everything. Look at that. Update Power BI, perfect. That's exactly what I want to do now. Um, oh, sign in. Let's see if I can sign in. I knew that I should, I knew I should have started it before. But we can actually, as I said before, we can actually, um, uh, if we do something like that, we can actually access it directly as an OData feed and we get some, this is the what's published through the controlled version right now. So we can actually get collection IDs and everything. Um, so it's very easy in console admin data. So we can actually do something very simple, at least from Power BI, but it's really great. Um, so it's, it's actually a good start, right? But what's more, even more better is of course PowerShell. That's what I like as well. So we can, in PowerShell, we can actually um, access this without any module at all. So while that loads up, I have some example here as well. Uh, my, the URL will be um, like this for my case to use WMI and to get all packages, for example, as an example query. Um, this is what you can use. Um, I have some other example queries, I hope finished and ready as I did it already before to prepare. Um, so if we do it like this, we can start those to start with. And then we can do something like this and it will list list all the packages in my environment and the package source path. And this is not how the package source path should look because I've had a VM breakdown. So it's a total mess. That's why I created it. 
uh, but again, no uh, no PowerShell module, uh, no PowerShell module needing updating, nothing. We just access with three lines, four lines. We just access and, and get all that information. Application, same way. Uh, give me all the applications. And it's kind of fast, right? Uh, as well. Uh, so that's all my packages. And I'm looking for a superseded flag as well, if I have one. Uh, we can do uh, devices, give me information about devices. And in this case, we get all the devices I have and all the information about them in a grid view. So I can, it's very fast and very powerful. Uh, so I hope this will be the scripting, um, scripting solution. I think this will, I have so much plans for this feature, so it's crazy. Uh, we can get the unique username and the, the primary user of my device as well. Um, so it's actually really, I think it's really, really powerful. And as I said before, we can, if we can use this, we, this will replace all the web services we use today, because this will be the one to rule them all, I think. Um, and if we look at the log files, as you want log files, right? Uh, you want details, that's always nice. We actually have a new log file called admin service. We are very spoiled with log files. So here I can actually see my query coming in. Uh, user machine relationship, uh, query successfully run, who ran it. Uh, so we actually get basically exactly the same, uh, the same logging as we have with the SMS provider. So this is a good way of, um, this is a good way of troubleshooting as well, if we need to troubleshoot it. So it's, it's very easy. There's actually an event log as well. So it, it's more modern in every way possible. So I think the admin service will, um, will um, definitely um, change how we use the configuration manager product. Um, and we can do all kinds of integrations. Uh, so let's hope that they open up more, more, more and more in the version controller for us. Um, as I said, I think it will replace all custom web services because today we used all different custom web services. Um, and they are more or less secure. In this case, we will use the web service provided by the product instead to remove a computer from a collection or query for a driver doing OSD or whatever we like. Uh, so no more uh, third party uh, uh, web services. We can use the secure way and there's different ways we can choose to authenticate as well. And we can use it over internet. So I think it's, um, I think it's going to be really, really cool when we get more and more features moving over to uh, the admin service instead. Uh, we already did the demo. Uh, so that was number one. I hope you think that's as cool as I think. Um, it's hard to see it because you already, maybe already using it, um, but it's, it will be very useful in the future. Uh, we have desktop analytics, uh, which is my next topic. Uh, I think this is, um, this is an, a huge investment from Microsoft as well, and it replaces Windows Analytics with skills end of life in end of January. Uh, basically, it it gives us more than than just the analytics for upgrading to the next version of Windows 10. It actually gives us um, inventory of all apps we have uh, and how it's used, and we can compare that. So, so we can we can upgrade to a new version of Windows 10, and then we can compare how many app crashes we have compared to business average, for example. So we can see if we're better or worse, or if we are on pair, or if we should do something different. So I think it's I like everything where we can compare to others because that's things that can make us better. Because if we see someone else doing a better job, then we know that there's potential to, to do something better here as well. Um, and we also can see, of course, the compatibility issues with apps as before. And I like it because it's also, I will show it later, but it will also mark as much as it can as not important, like built-in stuff. So we'll save a lot of time on that as well. And then we can create pilot, pilot groups. And it will help us. In my demo, I always get it to select all my machines. So and that's bad. Um, but that's because I only have one model 
of each hardware, um, which is poor, uh, poor demo. You should have more. Um, and then we can actually see the monthly up status of the monthly updates as well, which is interesting because we had that feature in Windows Analytics um, and it was used most by modern uh, managed clients only to see the patch compliance on those machines. But to use desktop analytics, and this is my perfect uh, uh, presentation of the next slide. Oof. The requirements is actually that we need a configuration manager client on the machine to use desktop analytics. That wasn't the case with Windows Analytics. We also need a, a license. Uh, so it's not, everyone says it's free, but it's, I would more say that it's included in what you pay for as you will actually need a license to use it. We also need an Azure subscription. There will be no cost for analytics data, but we need a subscription itself. For configuration manager 19.6, of course, there is a hot fix and update roll up. So you could use 19.2, but I definitely recommend 19.6. And we need business approval to configure Windows Diagnostics data level to enhance limited on the pilot devices, at least. Um, enhance limited, there's the, basically, it, 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 I think it sends okay information. The only thing is that in the docs, there's a note saying that we try to, Microsoft tries to scrub all the user app information if you have an app crash using AI, but there's a slight, 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 slight risk that it will, uh, that it will miss something. Uh, so that's something that, that's why I wrote you need business approval because you will still need to make someone aware that that could happen and then make a risk analysis and say that it's probably not, not gonna happen, then at least you've done it and then you can start using it. So I think that's an important thing to take care of, take into account as well. Uh, we configure it in Configuration Manager. Um, so we basically set everything under the Desktop Analytics tab. And I can show that instead because it's much more fun um, than showing a screenshot. Um, so we have it. Let's see where we have it now. It's always tried to, hard to talk and do something else at the same time. Uh, basically, we configure it here. Sign in to Desktop Analytics, connect Configuration Manager. It takes like five minutes to do it. It's very, very, very fast to configure. Uh, so when, once you've done it, it it's a no-brainer uh, to do it. Um, so that's definitely really, really fast. And then we have the health. It takes a while to load and we have plans as well. Uh, so it's really, really, really good, I think. Uh, and there's some in, important things here as well. I think this is very, very important as well. So you can actually see which devices are reporting and are not. That was the biggest issue I had with Windows Analytics was that I had 10,000 machines in Configuration Manager and I had 8,972 in uh, Windows Analytics. Where's the rest? Now we actually get the report saying that these machines are properly enrolled, these machines are awaiting enrollment, so you won't see them. So I think that's really, really, a really good thing as well, that we can see those things. Um, so we go back, we set the diagnostics data, as we said, to enhance. This is also something we need to configure after 1803. I did that before, but it's always overwriting my um, demo. So I don't think I have one now, but otherwise it will actually not show the computer name. It will show the grid of it instead. So it will say uh, uh, a long grid instead of a computer name. And if we're looking at, um, if we're looking at uh, compatibility issues, it's actually kind of good to know which computer we're talking about. Uh, it makes it much more easier to troubleshoot to do something else. So I think that's uh, that's something we need to do as well. But as I said, the computer name was taken out of the analytics in 1803. So we need to set it to enhance limited and enable um, the diagnostics name in the diagnosis data. Otherwise, we'll not, we'll not stay the name. Uh, so it's very easy to do. To access it, it's a... Um, it's, uh, web portal. We access it easily with an aka.ms address. 
um, and we can have a quick look at it here as well. Uh, oops, and then it looks like this basically. So we get it in the uh, in the normal de device management portal, and here I can see exactly the same number, and that's what I like. As I said before, I have exactly the same number here in my configuration manager. It said I have eight machines that's working and two machines that isn't working. And if I go to the portal, it says I have eight machines and 10 machines aren't working. I have 336 apps as well. But I think this is very good because then I can see which machines are working and which are not. Um, so I think that's a big, big difference, as I said. And we, you can also say troubleshoot enrollment, then you get the whole way. This is how many machines that are sending data. Why are they not extending data? And I refer you to the configuration manager console. Uh, here is where you get your commercial ID key. Um, and you can see the data, how long it takes before it first updated. And we can offboard. You have your Microsoft subscription, which is required. Do you have one of the supported? Yes. Uh, configure the users so we can provision the apps. We can configure other workspace users as well to use the workspace. And then uh, we have access to the workspace itself. Uh, so it's actually, it's actually really, really cool. So this is what, how we use it. So we have the security updates. You can see that I'm lazy. I have <laughs> apparently not um, implemented uh, the absolutely latest um, uh, security updates or quality updates in my environment. So all my devices are missing updates. We can see that as well. And we have the feature updates. Now I've actually upgraded all my machines. So they're actually in service. So we can see when they're getting close to end of service and when we actually must do something or we can wait. Then we create plans. Everything is done through plans. So if I take a plan, this is where we get the wizard to help us. This is the deployment progress right now. Seven of eight devices is upgraded. I have 216 days left of support. So that's that's nice. That's plenty of time. I have the target completion was 41 days ago. That's bad. And then it will actually help me go through all the steps. So I can look at the assets and see, okay, what do I need to do? So I have not important set, but I have importance to set as well. This is my noteworthy apps. And it's uh, this is something I like. It actually marks apps as not important automatically as well. Uh, so we can see like, for example, uh, settings or um, whatever is marked uh, automatically as not important, like all the built-in stuff that saves a lot of time. And we can, of course, set it as well. We get the adoption status as well. Is it highly, ad highly adopted and what's the status? And if we wonder what these means, we can just click on it. And we hopefully will get to a page saying what it means and if it's supported and what state it is. This and this is the version. It's highly being highly adopted. We can see which versions and how much they are used. Um, and we can switch here as well. So there's a lot of information we can dig into uh, and have a look at uh, from in here as well. So it will save us time just finding all that stuff as well. Uh, and then I can, of course, set my own status and saying that um, I don't really care if um, paint is not important or highly adopted. I think it should be critical for me. And I have an owner, which is um, uh, Jorgen is owning it. I would never assign it to myself, just for the record. Uh, and what the status is, if it's ready or not ready or review in progress. Uh, so we can see that as well. And we can see how many installs we have in the environment. So, so we get a lot of information for free, uh, presented in a nice, nice UI. Uh, and we can, of course, then go to the next step and, and plan the pilot. And this is where my uh, environment always uh, makes fun of me. I have four uh, uh, machines in my pilot, and it suggests that I add three more for uh, additional redundancy um, as well. Uh, so that could be, and then I can say, okay, let's do that. And then it will do that for me. Uh, so it's actually very nice. 
I think it's very nice to follow the process as well. So how am I doing? Have I, have I implemented it? Yes. How many have completed? Do I have a tension? Do I have a problem? Uh, and I can also go in here and see drivers as well. Do I have a driver issue somewhere? And in my, I have, I have only, apparently only old hardware with zero drivers uh, with known issues. And I think this is something that will save us a lot of time as well. Uh, because one thing that even if we go modern or whatever we go, I think one of the biggest challenges for for us as, as client admins is the BIOS and driver update when we go to a new version of Windows 10. Most vendors recommend or require us to actually upgrade both firmware and drivers for a new model to be supported. And, and that time, if you look at all the preparation you need to do to deploy, to start testing applications on a new version of Windows 10, just managing drivers and BIOS firmware upgrade, that's the biggest one pile of hours I see at least in the projects I'm in. Because if we should do that as HP, Dell, everyone recommends, that's a, that's a big job to do. Uh, so one way of doing it is um, taking a chance, of course, and neglecting it and, and use this information as well, uh, saying that for we and have a look at known issues instead and let this decide if we need to upgrade. Um, we can also be proactive and see after the upgrade as well to see how, how did it go. Uh, we can see the health. Do we have any crashes or what's happening in there as well? Uh, so we could we could see here if there was an issue with something. We could actually see if there was an issue as well. Uh, so it's actually it it will give us a very good insight and a very good help in the process to get this working. Uh, and I like the deployment plan think and all the deployment plans they will go directly into my SCCM console. So if I go in under collections and under um, deployment plans, it will actually create the collections for me and populate them as well, according to um, what, I, what desktop analytics have decided. Uh, it won't deploy anything to that collection. So if I look at those collections, I hope they don't have any deployments to them right now. So we have to do that from configuration manager. So here I can decide. So here I get my deployment plans and here I can decide instead, okay, so how do I want to do this? And then I can see, okay, this is the number of devices that have come down uh, to this that are ready for the pilot in this case. Uh, and how do I do the pilot then? So I can deploy a task sequence to that machine or to that collection. And then I deploy a task sequence to upgrade those machines. The wizard likes test sequences for now. Uh, so we actually, so, so, so we can do that. And so we can actually do that. And then we get the information here as well, if it's up to date or what happened. And then we can do the same for production. When we move to production, then we will get the same nice graphs as well. Um, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a really good tool. Uh, the problem, one of the challenges I'm having is even if I still know the number from here, um, they they still disappear. Uh, I think too fast when people are not connected, or if they uh, put the laptop in a drawer or somewhere. So I have I see machines that customers that are going back and forth. Um, um, but again, that's they will fall into the production when they go back. So it's not a big deal. But I I would like more retention time than we have. So that's desktop analytics, and I think that will save us time. And then looking at going further with Windows 10 servicing, I think going to a model where we do a risk-based approach like this, that's the only way of doing it. Uh, testing everything, that time has passed. Uh, that will cost too much. Uh, unfortunately, in one case, one in, in some scenarios, there are of course different businesses and different parts of businesses that we need to be very, very careful about. Uh, whether have uh, certified systems or uh, different um, 
standards they must live up to then we need to take care of those of course but otherwise i think risk risk based approach and following up proactively afterwards that's a good good approach to save time and money and if we've done it a couple of times it actually works really well uh, the number of issues are less than anyone could imagine yeah a screenshot of it and the connection dashboard if i if my environment was unreachable uh, so that was two of the things so far configuration manager in real time then um i like this this is so cool the fast channel or client notification or bgb channel uh, um, sweden we have a saying that the nice kid have many names um and that would be a good one as well um it was first introduced in SCCM 2012 service pack one. So that would be like eight years. No, that would be five, seven, six or seven years ago. Uh, and it was mainly used for endpoint protection. So we could get the alerts in real time. Now it's much, much, much more. Um, so basically there's no, if anyone is thinking that this is a new feature, we should be uh, afraid of using it. Will it, will it, uh, and will it put any additional load on my SCCM server and SMS provider? It's been around for a long, long time. So you should not really have to care about that or be afraid of that. Start using it instead. So this is the features we had to start with. We had endpoint protection. We could initiate the full scan, quick scan and download definitions if needed. And of course they will report back any virus or malware found as well. Um, now we get the icon saying that it's actually alive. That's also done through this channel. And we have all these nice new features in client notification. That's also the same thing. Um, also using the same channel. And we can use run script and we can use start and CM pivot as well. Uh, and actually the next feature we'll talk about will also use this feature. Uh, as it will, uh, as we're talking about um, install applications as well in real time, that will do. That will also use the fast channel as well. So there's no difference. Uh, and this is, um, yeah, and exactly there it is install applications. Uh, so this is um, a picture from the tech community site. We actually can see what happens. Uh, so we have a BGB MGR.log file. Uh, which actually we can monitor what's sent, being sent out there as well. And the management points are notification servers and they will um, um, be responsible for the messaging itself. On the clients, we have a CCM notification agent log, which will take care of it. So basically it will, it will stay there and listen on TCP uh, 10123 port and if that's not available or if you haven't opened that in a firewall it will fall back to uh, 80443 to keep the channel alive because it will it will try to do that uh, if it if it can so it actually will work um, but and that's something that we need to take care of of course but that's actually cool so the client again configuration manager never never has uh, more than you do like remote tools or if you do client push configuration manager will never go out to the client it's the client that connects to the management point um, and so we don't have any outgoing traffic um, in that way so when when the machine starts up it the ccm agent will actually connect to the management point and it will have that channel open all the time for any alert for several years, so that's no difference. Um, but it's very, very powerful as well. You should see me uh, making big gestures here now when I'm talking for myself. That's always fun doing webinars. Um, same pivot uses it the same way. Uh, our built-in query languages to run against the collection. Uh, PowerShell scripts, of course. And same pivot contains all hardware inventory and more and same pivot i think is it's one of the least um, used new features as well because this is not just a feature for client admins and that's why i've been i've been pushing 
pushing and trying to do um, uh, user voice items as well that we should have seen pivot standalone which we have now because I think same pivot can be used by the security team as well because in some scenarios they have very expensive products doing similar things or they are lacking that kind of tool now we can have do a same pivot standalone installation or at least in it's in preview in 1906 so we can actually do a standalone installation of same pivot and then they can run that without having the stcm admin console installed and that's I think that's important. I always try to have as a, a li little number of admins or users using the admin console as as ever possible. Because even if we have a great um, a great um, um, how should I put this? We have a great potential in in um, delegating permissions uh, in the console. The console is still very complex. And some of the permission delegations are um, uh, sometimes open up more permissions that you want to give. Um, so I have many, many big customers I work with. They have their own front ends for service desk or build their own solution or buy a third party solution just to keep admins or service desk or technicians out of the console so we can keep the number down just to make sure that we get the nice and clean environment, which no one makes any big mistakes in. Uh, so I think running C and Pivot is a great, great thing that we can do it standalone. Run script. This is also one thing, right? Uh, will it replace all right-click tools? No, most likely not, because there are so many right-click tools out there. Uh, but I think it's there are some great examples out there if you um, just Google it, how to fix domain memberships. So you can actually... If the machine isn't has fallen out of the domain, the domain membership is broken. You can actually fix it using a, a run script feature because the the SSM client will still connect, and we can do it that way. Uh, collect log files from the machine. Uh, I wrote a script as a sample a long time ago. I will update that sometime when I have the time. Uh, but it's also useful um, if a first line. Uh, looks at the machine and they can't solve the issue. Just run a script that collects all the log files from the machine, attach it to a zip file, and then then you can take that zip file, uh, attach it to the errand, and then escalate it to the second or third level or whatever you like. Uh, fix after update issues. Get clients out of provisioning mode if we do servicing of Windows 10 for everything. Basically, you can do everything we like. I think one of a cool community thing would be to. Uh, create a community repository of all the run scripts that are out there. Uh, I haven't had time to set it up yet, and I don't know how. Uh, I would have hoped it would be in the community hub in the, in the console, but we're not there yet, so we'll see. Uh, but we can use it for everything. And what's more important with run scripts, and why should we use it instead of right-click tools? Because again, it's about opening ports, right? If you're going to use right-click tools, they use WinRM or depends on which one you're using. Uh, for run scripts, we can actually run it uh, through the fast channel. So we can run it through CMG if they're on the internet. We can run it, um, uh, yeah, without accessing the machine once again. So I, as the logged on user in the console, I don't have the permission to access the machine. I don't need that in that this scenario with the same user account. And that's an important security perspective as well. You shouldn't use the you shouldn't use a, 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 an account which has permissions on all the clients and use that in the admin console and run that as well. Uh, because that's I mean Configuration Manager is an extremely powerful product. You are a local system on all the machines you manage. Um, if you install the Configuration Manager client on, on your domain controllers, in theory, you are a domain admin as well with that account or with that tool. So come and there's examples uh, from, can't remember which security conference it was, where you can actually run PowerShell scripts to create hidden packages. Just like the, the built-in uh, client upgrade, for example, you can't see that package somewhere, uh, but it's still there. Uh, and that's uh, so. So there are tools out there. So actually, if if a 
malicious guy get control of your configuration manager console those scripts that they can create hidden 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 deployments that you won't see in the console only in the database that could be run on all the machines and and yeah you can guess the damage that could do uh, so we should be careful about that so that's why i think it's important that try to use run scripts instead of right click tools and try to face out the right click tools because run scripts are more secure and a better better solution altogether uh, and yeah you've seen this before i'm gonna i guess you've seen it before um so i can uh, i'm not sure which script i have here this will be fun uh let's see how bad my loose side my my uh my list of scripts looks um if i have a good somewhere collection for it let's see if we can do like that um or should we take something else we can take that one. Um, then we should ah, it's not that bad i have a script to update user group policies uh, i have a script that runs um, um what's it called it yeah basically cleans the disk it runs the clisk cleanup tool with uh, command variables as well so you can actually have it to clear uh, deliver optimization cache, branch cache, everything in a very simple way. If you have out of disk space, um, copy the log files, as we said. Um, yeah, I've tried this uh, kill TS launch. Um, so we can actually do uh, something like this then. And I think this is, this is really, really cool. Uh, uh, we can have different script outputs. So if you haven't started using it, try to use this to get rid of the right click tools because that's like legacy add-on stuff uh, so that was three major features let's go to the one i think i've been playing a lot with uh, and that's direct deployment of apps as i said before if someone told me uh, five years ago that we're gonna be able to right click on a computer and say install this application it will take like 20 seconds for it to start installing i would say you were joking uh, because configuration manager when it was called uh, sms uh, there was a joke saying that sms stood for slow moving software because you had so many cycles that needs to happen before things actually happen especially if you use ad groups for for application deployments um, and that's a different uh, topic to talk about why you should or shouldn't do that uh, there's there's some perks with using AD groups as well, um, but what we do here basically is we don't we use the approve application request feature, so we install that we we activate that, uh, then we don't have to hide any available apps, and it works really nice over CMG as well, uh, and as I said it's super fast. Right now we can't approve an application for um, a collection, but we can do it with script, uh, of course, we can script everything. Um, so basically we right click, it's only the device's node. So if you think, if you don't see it, you are probably in the wrong node. Um, so basically we can right click um, an, a device, say install application, and then we will see an application request show up, which is approved automatic so the user don't so basically it's built on application approval and it uses the fast channel as well so we can see that the command coming out using the fast channel so it's really fast in 1906 we got a new one called retry install and that's basically if the there was a, in um, uh, 1902 there was a or 1810 there was a there was an issue when the application actually failed. It was, uh, let's put it mildly, hard to get it to rerun. Um, now it, we can do retry install and it will rerun as well. Or if the end user uninstalls the app, we can also get it back this way. Um, and of course, you like the details as always, right? So we need to script this, of course. And we don't like UIs. Or we do actually, otherwise we won't be working with Windows, then we'll be working with Linux, but that's a different topic. Uh, we should do scripting. So we have four methods in the WMI. Uh, we have approve, we have create approved request, and we have deny, and we have retry install. So basically, we to, to create a new application or to, uh, create a, 
deploy an application using a script, the first time we need to use the create approved request uh, feature because it will it will do exactly what it's called. It will create the approved request and it will install and it will uh, approve it automatically. If we then deny it, it will uninstall the application just as fast as it's installed. And if I then then we have a, a, a method called approve, and that's because if we do it the second time, so if I do it this order, I create an approved request, it will install, then I deny it, it will uninstall, and then the user said, wait, I, I still needed it. Then we already have an, a request that's denied, then we need to change the status of that to approve. And then we can do retry install. So we can script everything using WMI, and that's really, really cool. Uh, and it actually looks like this. Uh, so to create an approved request script, we basically, um, there's a sample on tech community. I modified it a bit because I'm I'm lazy again, so I don't like writing the long app quid. So I added so it actually finds that for us instead. Uh, so basically, we just use this uh, uh, little script to approve the application and it will install automatically. Same thing if we don't want to deny it. Uh, we can just deny it, right? And again, this will take, and, and look at this from a automation perspective. If we have automation in place today, say we have service now, that's a, not a, an impossible scenario. We have service now, service now puts the computer in an AD group or collection when you order an application. And then it waits for a collection evaluation, depending on how you added it. And then it waits for the computer to check in, check for a new machine policy, or if you added that, or you need to add that in your workflow as well. Here, basically, you just have to, from an automation engine, say, app is approved, and then it's installed. Uh, so let's have a look at that and see if I can show this without, um, this is how it looks from my my script that was actually finished during the time I was talking about different stuff. Um, as we said, it's only the devices node, and we shouldn't use that console. I've prepared another one. Let's have it this way instead, and see if we can get this to work. Wake up, please. So that's how we like it. So. And then we have my, my little machine here, and we have the next one here. I've prepared everything like a good TV chef as well. Uh, so let's close that one. And then we'll select the machine here. Say, um, right click. I shouldn't do it twice, only once. Um, and then we'll say install application. Yeah will select my application. These are, it will only show applications that are correctly deployed with application approval as a requirement. Um, and this is a good one. We can show that. Let's let's just pray that I, I tested everything out. So now the application is approved. And hopefully it will install even if I have a pending reboot on that machine. Otherwise I have to restart it uh, before. Uh, so it takes a little, little while before it happens. And we can see the progress as well, as I said before, in the BG log file. That won't be any log file I've opened for a long while, long time. And I don't have it on that machine either. So let's see if it shows up on the machine. Or if it won't. Come on, you should be super fast so that I can get my demo working like really fast. Come on. Uh, and we could see it, maybe it's the pending reboot. And we have it here as well. So we can have, we can see that it's now here. It's approved and it was approved just now. And if we go to, we don't see the client notification in the console, we only see it in the log files. Um, so we can see that it actually connects to that machine Im immediately. Let's see there, new software available and it's installed directly as well. So I have 7-zip installed and we can open this one as well. 
so you can see and it was maybe it always takes a long time when you need to talk during the time as well so let's see what happens now let's see if we get that one to start showing the install status we can see that we have 1604 installed right now um, and why did i push an old one? Oh wait that was the wrong um, that was the wrong one i pushed to that machine let's uh, let's upgrade it to um, a newer version so i've already configured supersedence on those on that one and then we'll say application again application and then we'll take 1806 and then we'll and then i took the wrong machine of course install application and then we'll take 1806 on this one instead so that was just to show that i've superseded that application so what will happen now is that 1604 will be removed and uh, the next new one will be installed as well so it also honors supersedence as well uh, and it works really really well and it's never as fast as you want it to be when you need to talk and talk and talk while you're waiting um, but it's really it's super super cool uh, no collection permissions no collections needed nothing no ad groups nothing we can just get it installed um, in near real time like 30 seconds or something so now you can see it's gone and now 1806 came so it actually uninstalled 1604 because it was superseded and then it installed 1806 uh, i think that's really cool uh, but again you want the really really cool stuff right so let's do it the hard way or the cool way uh, i've prepared for this as well uh, but now I need my other machine because that's where the script is. Um, so I prepared uh, something I call command line. This is much easier. Uh, so this is basically the PowerShell script I talked about. Uh, I give it the computer name, the app name, and I set it to be true to install. And then uh, just a comment so I can write whatever I like. And I don't need a comment either if I don't want to, but I could. So let's uh, run as administrator, then go to um, where I have the script, which is in my script repository, which isn't that one. Uh, so here we have it. And then I just paste my command line only once would be even better and not two times um, and then it should install uh, should approve microsoft edge for that machine instead or for that app for that computer um, and if we look in the console now under application approvals software library application management application request and now we have for this machine we have a new one called uh, for microsoft edge dev and it's approved and when we go back to the machine hopefully if i just talk long enough it will install uh, the microsoft edge dev branch uh, and if i want to uninstall it uh, we want to do that with the script as well because script is fun uh, so let's take that script and say that we want to uninstall it so basically we, ju we just deny the request and then when that's done we can look here and then the request is all of a sudden denied and if we go back to the client which is i guess it's kind of tired of me not knowing what i want to do we will see Edge being uh, uninstalled as well. Uh, so it's really, really fast and it's really, really cool. So now Edge is gone again. Uh, so I think that's really, really, really big, big news in Configuration Manager that we can do this. Um, I have a wish list though for Santa, if Santa is uh, listening to this call or maybe the recording afterwards. Um, it would be nice to see and view 
uh, for to ease your see approved apps for a device um, and maybe approve apps outside devices and maybe if we could control it perhaps saying that i want to approve an app for a whole collection of of devices at the same time uh, so let's see if uh, santa is listening to this recording as well uh, amy may pos amy will know if he signed up or not so uh, just a quick one as well before i've used up my first hour of time and all the oxygen as well uh, face deployment face deployment's been around for a long time as well again 1802 as a pre-release for test sequence 1806 no longer pre-release and applications was added 1810 software updates were added software updates i'm not really sure if that's where i would use it but you never know and in 1908 technical preview it we can also have templates i will show that in the next hour uh, during our technical preview uh, run through what's coming in configuration manager uh, so basically um, basically face deployments i think it's used too little and we it's getting better and better for each release so if you tested it out and you didn't like it test it again there are some new things added every time to make it even better um, but what it's all about is that we can deploy it saying that if we have a deployment success percentage of 95% or a number of devices that are successful, we can go through to the next collection in line to deploy that. The reason why I said I, I don't use it for software updates is that in 99.9999999% all the applications, all the software updates are actually successfully installed that's not the problem. The problem is that maybe we have a line of business app that will break and we face deployments can't of course be that. Uh, so that's why I, I personally don't use it for software updates, uh, but I think it's a, it's a very, very cool thing and you should start using it because it will save time. Again, we can automate boring stuff. So instead of monitoring, oh, did this go through us? Did the pilot go as it should or, first ring or first face or whatever we like to call it uh, oh then i need to deploy it further on and i need to do this and that then we can just have it run automatically um, and let it self decide uh, so in technical preview we can actually do this as well we can actually create templates select the template and we can when we're done we can actually save the deployment i just did as a template as well so I think face deployment should be used much, much more. That's why I've added it and just spared a couple of seconds to talk about it because it will give you um, a good one. And now we'll see here as well, we have our face deployments. And I think it's, it will give you a better automation, better quality, and, and you will have to do less. Again, I'm, I'm lazy, maybe it's just me, uh, but I like, when things are done automatically and I still have some kind of control, right? Um, so if I do it like this, and I can say that my first collection, I, I've of course created um, collections for this somewhere, like in test, for example, we can take that one and then we'll take my next ring, uh, which will be, um, I have software update rings, I can take that instead as a demo um, and then I can set exactly how many percentage should be successful um, when does the deadline run and uh, when should it automatically uh, begin this phase uh, and then I can add, move uh, up and down uh, and view and whatever I like uh, and then we can save it. there's more features in the technical preview of course but I think that's the, I think face deployments should be used more. That's basically why I added it as the, the next one. Um, so that's the challenges I see with all these things. I have less than a minute left, of course. Uh, new, there's new way to follow up uh, with, with face deployments. That's a new report, new pain. That could be one reason for 
uh, I, that I don't see it being picked up very heavily. Uh, and third-party integrations, if you build your own integration to show the dashboard. And I said more, software updates, it really needs to be tested more than just that the installation is successful. Um, so, um, so keep that in mind. And for the whole, if we're gonna summarize these five features, don't do things like you always did. Uh, try to do it in a better way. Try to be better every day. Try to solve, try to spare time or get time back of doing things smarter or better or, or delegate or whatever. So you, so you have time to do testing out technical previews and, and the, yeah, whatever it is, developing new cool run scripts. Um, so I think that's that's a good thing. Um, and test out the features you 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 you're interested in and if you have the possibility test them out as when they are in pre-release and send these because uh, send either suggestions or frowns or smiles they will they will look at this definitely especially the frowns i guess uh, because that's that's what i would have done um, because the smiles that's good we are on the right track a frown that maybe could be a product product improvement. So I would look at those really fast. Uh, so send your suggestion. In this view, I would like to do this. And uh, they will and uh, they will they will look at it, I promise you. Uh, so provide feedback. And if you provide feedback in the pre-release phase, it's or in the technical preview, it's much more likely that you'll see it adopted really fast because they're still the team is working on those features. Um, so I think that's a good recommendation as well. Uh, and that was my first um, slide, uh, my first slide, my first presentation, only two minutes over time. I'm actually quite proud of that. Uh, wasn't too bad. You did great. There are some questions. Um, I assigned the questions to you, so you should see nice. it um, in your little questions pane for the GoToWebinar app. Yep, so if you yep. just wanted to answer those over the break, 